Shalom Lakam, which is peace unto you all. Hi, Rob Tawab La Atham Zaakia Kam Yawam Man Rachagadal Charlotte, which is good evening. This is your brother Yawam from the GMS camp in Charlotte. Nchamatam Kaya Ha Malakwath Hashamayam Kwa Ra Repent Ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Call Halayim La La Abanawa Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah Bahasham Rachagadash Wamashana La Zakwaniyam Nawa Wamalakim Shaw. Rachagadol, which is all praises to our Father Yahweh, which means He exists. Bahasham in the name Yahweh Shai delivers, and double honors to the elders and apostles of Israel, the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. All right, this is Chabakwak Habakkuk chapter two and verse eighteen. It says, "What profit of the graven image that the maker thereof have graven it, the molten image and the teacher of lies that make the maker salak, that the maker of his work trusted therein to make dumb idols." It says, Woe unto him that saith to the wood, Awake to the dumb stone, arise, it shall teach. Behold, it is laid over with silver and gold, and there is no breath at all in the midst of it. You see, so what would benefit? You know, these these idols have no benefit. You see, they, they're not going to avail anything. You see, because when we look at the times of uh, calamities and troubles and things like that, the different woes that are uh, set in uh, the scriptures, you know, they never have any types of answers. You see, the only thing that has answers the only uh, uh book that has the answers are is the true wisdom allows you to understand out of scriptures you see that's why it says right here in verse 19 and there is no breath at all in the midst of it talking about those idols you see the the wood and the stone talking about christianity all right and then also uh islam you see but uh, i just want to go into this real fast i'm um, touching on uh, these idols so uh, let me get this real fast this is uh let me get this this is what they call the uh, Vesica of Pisces. And, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, people like uh, 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 Jay-Z, you know, you'll see it in like the, uh, the uh, I believe it's Chanel, you know, like the designer. But Esau put it out there in the symbolism and stuff like that. But essentially it goes back to Latin. It's, it's, uh, it's called a fish bladder, you know, but the Vesica part that goes into, um, it goes into, uh, when you dig deeper down into like the root word, it goes into the uterus. You see, because this, this went to Queen of Heaven worship, but I want to skip down. And it says, Renaissance artists frequently surrounded images of Yahweh Shah with the Vesica of Pisces. You see, and that essentially went and it gave off a, um, it was a symbol for an idol. You see, and I also got the, the word for ventricle because it's actually what uh, Vesica comes from. It says, belly, paunch, stomach, appetite, womb, unborn child. And it says uh, the uterus when you skip down, you see. But uh, they they take that sim the uh, the symbol and pretty much just put it on uh, different things. I got it right here as well. It says it says um, which this is a quote. It says birth portal to d describe its purpose and energy is the basis of creation in this universe. However, when I contemplate the true nature of never ending life, there is a cycle of destruction and creation, dissension and ascension, contraction and expansion. This has led me to name this this form. The bridge portal as a is a as it is a doorway that acts as a bridge between spirit and form you see and that's that you know that's that's false you know and um going into you know have a coop you know like we just got you know it said the teacher of lies you know that's a lie i'm gonna go back to it all right and it says um it's a lot it says what profit of the graven image have a cook 2 and 18 says what profit of the graven image that the maker thereof have graven it the molten image and the teacher of lies that the maker of his work trusted therein to make dumb idols you see a teacher of lies you see because when you went back to that it said the bridge portal which they essentially trying to say that you know they they made that uh, um they essentially uh, um took something from you know the hebrew letter da all right and also the doorway you know because yahweh uh, ultimately would be the door you see but they they put in uh you know false doctrine you know just like what they did with the trinity you know because when you look at the um the vesica of pisces it's, it has the same uh pattern as the uh that little trinity symbol that they got as well but i'm gonna get a couple precepts real fast this is um this is john chapter uh 10 and verse 9 and it says it says i am the door by me if any man enter in he shall be saved and shall go in and I so like and shall go in and out and find pasture. You see, so ultimately Yahweh Shah represents that door. All right, let me get another one because essentially they tried to tie that into uh, uh, Ishtar worship. All right, so this is Genesis Barbara Ashith chapter twenty-eight. All right, and we'll give verse twelve, and it says, "And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder, which that, that word ladder is Salam. It says set up on the earth, and the top of it." 
reach to heaven and behold the angels of the most high ascending and descending on it all right i'm going to this commentary real fast and it says uh right here let's skip down it says a ladder was was set up on the earth and it, its top reached to heaven and there were the angels of the most high were ascending and descending on it in jacob's dream there, uh, there was now access to heaven. Yaikwab now knew the Most High was closer than he ever thought before. And there was real access and interaction between heaven and earth. All right. And it says, I'm going to skip down. It says, Yahweh made it clear in John 1 and 51 that he is the access to heaven. He is the means by which heaven comes down to us and by which, have, which, and by which we can go to heaven. You know, which essentially he will represent that ladder. So uh, I'm going to get another precept. This is John chapter 5. And we can get verse 21 and it says, verse 20, it says, for the father loveth the son and sheweth him all things that himself doeth. And he will shew him greater works than these that ye may marvel. For as the father raises up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the son whom he will slot, even so the son quickeneth whom he will. For the father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the son. You see, so Yahweh Shah, you know, the scriptures say that, uh, you know, all things consist by him. All right, in uh, uh, Colossians chapter 1, and we'll get verse 15, it says, verse 16, it says, For by him, verse 15, we we'll start from verse 13, and it says, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible power, the firstborn of every creature, talking about Yahweh Shaha Mashayak. For by him were all three things created that are in heaven and in the earth. Or that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or domains or principalities or powers, all things are created by him and for him. You see, so all things was created by him, you know, because essentially he got the blueprint from the most high Yahweh, you know. So uh uh going into creation, you see, but then going back, all right, we was at uh John chapter five and uh we'll get verse twenty two and it says, For the father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the unto the son you see so um yahweh shall receive that title he received that uh, uh that authority from the lord yahweh you know that's his place you know he he he's over uh, uh creation as well as um as well as those that are destroyed you know so uh nevertheless continuing on let's get um let's get this let me get this this is the word for Daloth, you see, because they tried to uh, uh, put that into uh, the ideology, the false ideology of uh, the the Trinity, you know, the uh, the so-called Trinity, you know, which I'm actually get some on that real fast. This is. Uh, it's a lot. This is John 10 and 30. It says, I and my father are one. You see, so they're both on the same accord. It doesn't mean that, you know, they're the same person. You know, how the Christian, you know, dogma uh, preaches, you know. You know, you got the father and you got the son. You know, they're, they're on the uh, the same accord, you know. So, uh, continuing on, uh, let's go back to, uh, let's go back to, uh, it's a lot. I'm gonna, oh, this right here. It says Daloth, the door, you know, Yahweh Shah is that door, you know, he's that connection, you know, he he will be that, um, he's that ladder, you know, but it says Daloth, it says Daloth, a doorway, you know, a doorway is a connection, it says Lama, which is, a, you know, it goes into a staff, you see, and the staff, when you have staff, you re that represents authority, you know, because Yahweh Shah uh, received that authority from the Most High Yahweh, all right, and it has the thought for the sign or to delineate, and, it, it, and pretty much it goes into connection is, connection who is the authority that delineates, you know, or connect, yeah, the connection um, for the authority that, that delineates, you know, talking about Yahweh Shai, you know, because he's the connection, you know, he's also that staff, you know, and he's the one that 
ultimately delineates. And we'll get that definition for the word delineate as well. All right. And it says delineate and it says to describe or portray or set forth with accuracy or in detail. All right. We'll get that word for portray. And it says to describe in words. All right. Because essentially the scriptures say in order to have uh, the testimony of Yahweh Shah, you got to be in the spirit of prophecy. So I'm going to get that real fast. Because essentially that, you know, Yahweh Shah does that for the elect. But this is Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10. And it says, and I fell at the, I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said, I'm going to start at verse 9, it says, And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of the Most High. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that had the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship the Most High for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is a spirit of prophecy. So in order for to have this right here, you know, that uh, that true portray, uh, portraying or to be described in words or to be uh, uh, depicted, you know, to make a picture of, you know, in order to be delineated, you know, uh, one ultimately would have to uh, have the testimony of, of Yah, or excuse me, in order to have the testimony of, of Yahweh Shai, you got to be in the spirit of prophecy, just like it had just stated, you know. So I'm going to get another one, you know, because this proves that, you know, uh, we have a mediator in the heavens. But this is first Timothy chapter two and verse five. And it says, for there is one power and one mediator between the most high and men, the man, Hamashayak, Yahweh Shai. All right. So he he's the mediator, you know, I'm going to get this real fast. This is like Barya Hebrews chapter eight. And we'll give verse six. And it says, but now he hath obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises, you see. So Yahweh Shah represents uh, uh, that mediator, you know. I'm going to also get this. Um, this is Psalms, Thou chapter uh, 144, and we'll get verse 11, and it says, Rid me and deliver me from the hand of strange children whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood, you see. So talking about Esau Edom, you know, because he's chiefly the one that, uh, pushes forth, you know, the, this this idol tree. He he does his research with the different societies and stuff like that. So he ultimately understands what is a trap for Jake. You know, that's what he puts in his society. You know, he puts things like the Trinity, or he puts things like okay, well, with Jay Z, the the Vesca Pisces. He puts things like our right, Queen of Heaven worship. He puts that spirit in places like America, Babylon, and Great. You know, he he pushes to where he over sexualizes the the uh, the community or the society. You know, to where it's just you know pandemonium. You know. Which pandemonium that means uh, all demons, all right. But this is Yahshua Isaiah chapter nineteen and verse three, and it says, "And the spirit of Egypt shall fill in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the counsel thereof, and they shall seek to the idols and to the charmers, and to them that have familiar spirits and to the wizards." And that's ultimately what's going on. That's why we like at a, at this day and time, you know, if you look at places like Houston, you know, uh, they they had a, 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 a you know, a demic down there, you know, because that, that society, this society is, is over sexualized, you know, he so has, you know, the, uh, the porn, <laughs> you know, he puts it inside, you know, cartoons, he sexualizes the cartoons, you know, he puts things in the air, the food, you know, to pretty much where it's making it into a society of, of to where people are worshiping that queen of heaven, uh, spirit, you know, uh, mentioned in like, uh, Ephesus, you know, when they had, uh, Diana, you know, but uh, continuing on, let me get this real fast. This is Jeremiah, Yaramia, chapter 12, and verse 2. It says, verse 1, verse 2, it says, Thou hast planted them. Verse 1, it says, Righteous art thou, O Lord, when I plead with thee, yet let me talk with thee of thy judgments. Wherefore doeth the way of the wicked prosper? Wherefore are all they that they happy that do, deal very treacherously? Thou hast planted them, yet they have taken root. They grow, yet they bring forth fruit. Thou art near in their mouth, but far from their reins. And see, ultimately, it says near in their mouth because of this right here. This is the Holyam Psalm, chapter 73, in verse 9. And it says, they set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walk up through the earth. You see, so they constantly blaspheme. You see, that's why we got this right here. You know, because including this into, uh, uh, you know, Esau Edom did this. You know, he, he included this into um, uh, uh, the scriptures, if you will. You know, he he is the one with the... Uh, uh, iconoclasm you know the renaissance era where he 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 painted the lord as if he was a uh a so-called white man you know he's he's the one that included him in um and um uh, you know things as such you know this is where this ideology comes from you know you know but nevertheless um continuing on 
we'll get uh, Ecclesiastes Kwahalath chapter 3 and we'll get verse 15 and it reads it says that which hath been is now and that which is to be hath already been and the most high required that which is past you see so there's no new thing under the sun you know back in the ancient world they, they was into stuff like this but you see what Esau has done he's went back the scriptures say he's in a diligent search you know the, the or uh, essentially going into how his heart is deep you know so he's he, he's done he he's went and did his research you know so he's put these different spirits into america babylon the great you see and he, he ultimately think he's going to get away scot-free you know but no the, the lord is going to require that which is past you know he he's that when, when you go into that word require it goes into uh bakwash which means to make an inquisition or to search out you know it says to desire to exact to demand you know he's being sought out you know he's this devil's being exposed all right now i got this written down right here it says uh uh, it says vesica, which is a, a bladder, blister. It says uh, ventral, denoting the uterus. And then Pisces is a fish, which uh, in turn, you know, uh, end quote, or the begin to begin the quote, you know, it's the uterus of the fish, end quote. In their terms, you know, which essentially they would say, you know, women uh, represented circles and they would put two of them together. That's why when, when, when you know, Jake and, uh, um, you know, these heathen was in school. You know, they, they, they say, OK, make a Venn diagram. You know, it'll be two circles together, pretty much looking like the uh, the the Chanel, the Chanel symbol, you know, pretty much uh, not predictive programming, but uh, essentially uh, how Esau works in. Um, he works in layers, you know, so uh, I'm going to get some precepts on that as well, because that ultimately went into uh, like Queen of Heaven worship. All right. This is Jeremiah Yaramia, chapter seven. And we'll get verse 18. And it says. It says the children get it says the children gather wood and the fathers kindled the fire and the women need their dough, their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. All right. And that's essentially uh, uh, what has happened time and time again. You know, that's why we're in this captivity. All right. But I'm going to uh, get some more precepts on this. This is uh, Acts. This is Acts. It's Acts chapter 19, we'll get verse 24, and it says, It says, For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, bought no small gain unto the, the craftsmen. I'm going to get this word for Diana. And it says, uh, It says Artemis. It says complete light flow. It says Artemis. And essentially it went into uh, those that was in Ephesus. All right, and it says, Artemis, that is to say, the so-called Tauric or Persian or Ephesian Artemis, the goddess of many Asiatic people, to be distinguished from Artemis of the Greeks, the sister of Apollo. It says a very splendid temple was built to her at Ephesus, which was set on fire by her Herostratus and reduced to ashes. But afterwards, in the times of Alexander the Great, it was built in a style greater of greater magnificence. You know, so um, so let me read it again. It says Ephesian Artemis, the goddess of many Asiatic people, to be distinguished from the Artemis of the Greeks, the sister of Apollo. Nevertheless, you know, it, it went into one of the uh, uh, um, those uh, Grecian or Greek um, uh, so-called goddesses, you know, so because um, it actually was one of like the one of the. Um, Wonders of the world, uh, if I'm not mistaken, like one of the seven wonders of the world, you know, according to Esau's history. So it says, uh, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and says, sirs, ye know that by this craft we have our wealth. You see, going into uh, pretty much they have wealth by making an idol, you know, and that's how a lot of uh, uh, things are made because dudes is looking to make some money, you know. And it says, moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but Almost throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying there, they be no gods which are made with hands. Hey, pretty much, you know, was tearing down them strongholds. You know, that's that's what this word does. Is it tears down those strongholds. Let me get a quick precept. This is uh Second Corinthians chapter ten and verse four. It says, "For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, carnal, but mighty through the Most High to pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself." 
against the knowledge of the Most High and bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of Hamashayak. You see, so that's essentially what this word does, and that's what that's what was happening. Uh, um, you know, when Paul was uh, pushing his ministry, you know, but continuing on, it says uh, Acts nineteen and. 25 26 and it says 27 so that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught but also the temple of the great goddess diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed whom all asia and the world worshipeth and then and when they heard these things th these sayings they were full of wrath and cried out saying great is diana of the ephesians and the whole city was filled with the, with confusion and having caught Gaius and Arist Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. And while Paul would have entered in unto the people, the disciples suffered him not, and certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends sent unto him, desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. Some therefore cried one thing and some another, for the assembly was confused and there and the more part knew, and the more part knew not wherefore they were come together, and they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward, and Alexander be beckoned with the hand, and would have made his defense unto the people, but when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice, about the space of two hours, cried out, "Great is Diana, of the Jews," and when the town clerk had appeased the people. He said, Yea, men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how the city of, of the Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana and the image of which fell down from Jupiter? So pretty much the the point was, you know, that it was like one of the uh, pretty much Jake, you know, Jake that was scattered amongst them, you know, was going off because they was worshiping. Uh, they was into that queen of heaven worship, you know, so I'm going to get this real fast. But uh, that that pretty much was going into uh, the temple of Artemis, you know, at Ephesus, you know, and uh, these was the so-called seven wonders of the world. All right. And as we can see, um, the this one, the Artemis one was like uh, it was around like two two sixty two A.D. looks like. But it was it was one of the uh, the wonders of the world at the time, you know. They had the uh, hanging gardens of Babylon. Hanging Gardens of Babylon, the Great Pyramid at Giza, of Giza, and the Temple of Artemis, and also uh, Colossus of Rhodes, and et cetera, and et cetera, you know. So I'm um, going to get a couple more precepts. Um, I'm going to get Isaiah, Yashiah, chapter 44. forty-four. Forty-four, and we'll start at verse 9, and it says, it says, they that make a graven image are all of them vanity, and their delectable things shall not profit. And they that and they are their own witnesses, they see not nor know that they may be ashamed. Who hath formed a god or a molten image that is profitable for nothing? It's not gonna it's not gonna have any benefit. Behold, all his fellows shall be made ashamed, shall be ashamed, and the workmen they are they are of men, let them be gathered together, let them stand up. Yet they shall fear, and they shall be ashamed together. The smith with the tongs both worketh in the coals and fashion it with hammers and worketh it with strength of his arms yet he is hungry and his strength faileth he drinketh no water and is faint the carpenter stretched out his rule he marketh it out with a line he fitteth it with planes he marketh it out with the compass and maketh it after the figure of a man according to the beauty of a man that it remain that it may remain in the house pretty much going to the making of an idol he heweth him down cedars and cypress and taketh the cypress and the oak, which he stripping it for himself among the trees of the forest, he planteth in ash, and the rain doeth nourish it. Then shall it be for man to burn, for he will take therewith. He, so like, for he will take thereof, and warm himself. Yea, he kindle it, and break bread. He maketh a god and worship it. He maketh it a graven image and falleth down thereto. He burneth part thereof in the fire with part thereof. He wrote he eat. So like, with part thereof he eateth flesh, he roasteth ro roast, and is satisfied. Yea, he warmeth himself, and saith, Aha, I am warm, I have seen the fire, and the residue thereof he maketh a god, even his graven image, which graven goes into something that someone falls down to and worships it. He falleth down unto it, and worship it, 
and prayeth unto it and saith, deliver me for thou art my power. And you actually got Jake's that do that, you know, JC, you know, uh, um, you know, you got Jake's that's into Islam, you know, uh, falling down to uh, Allah, which that's, that just means God, you know. But when you really dive into it, you know, um, that uh, that star and that um, that crescent moon, that really goes back to Baal, the worship of Baal, you know. That, that star has also been associated with Ishtar. Then it says, they have not known nor understood, for he has shut their eyes that they cannot see and their hearts that they cannot understand. None considereth in his heart, neither is there not their knowledge nor understanding to say, I have burned part of it in the fire, yet also I have baked bread upon the coals thereof. I have roasted flesh and eaten it, and shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? Shall I fall down to the stock of a tree? He feedeth on ashes, the deceived heart hath turned him aside, that he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, is there not a lie in my right hand? And nobody actually considers this, you know, just like in the ancient world, you know, in the time of the Ephesians in Ephesus, you know, they was falling down to, uh, it's pretty much worshiping the, uh, in the temple of, um, Diana, you know, they was baking the cakes to the queen of heaven, that queen of heaven spirit, because really that Vesica Pisces, you know, that, um, that Trinity, all of that is associated with the same thing. You know, and they tried to uh, put a spin on that and then uh, tie it into the truth, you know. But nevertheless, you know, the scriptures say that uh, Esau was going to be uh, found out. He's, he, the Lord was going to make an inquisition, you see. So this devil, nothing is getting uh, uh, past the spirit, you know. This devil is being exposed, you know. Everything that he pretty much upholds, you know, sports, whatever. It's all it's all being found out to be a lie, you know, so. Just wanted to go into that, you know, I don't want to write to or Salah. I'm going to get another one. This is Shabbat Patyam, Judges chapter 2, and we'll give verse 11, and it says, And the children of Yahshua Allah did evil in the sight of the Lord and served uh, Balim, and they forsook the Lord power of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods of the gods of the people that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth, which the Vesica Pisces, the Queen of Heaven, all of that, uh, um, 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 Diana of uh, the Ephesians, that's that, that goes back to uh, Ishtar, you know, or what, like it says right here, Ashtaroth, you know, that goes back to um, to that, you know. So that's just what Esau does is he, he takes things and repackages them and makes them, you know, be in a certain way, you know, to better appease the, uh, the likings or the desires of the people in a specific uh, time period, you know. But again, you know, the Lord is exposing this devil. Uh, again, Arawatiza, uh, Zabanaya Apollo, so there's a beautiful edification through the Spirit. Wa Arawatiza, Atam Yashlai Latawabi, Lord's will. You all have a good night. Wash uh, along.